where does it start? Where does where where should we start? No, the beginning, but like where's in the PD like where's the page? No. Oh on the PDF? It's like page ninety three. It's like a ways in. Uh, why I got so it. deep? There's a big interview. The rage. So it's the oh. rage of Achilles. Yes. But the thing is we really can't start reading there because um there is a lot of introduction that we have to go through, but it's okay. I'm gonna breeze you through it as quick as possible. Um, so the Iliad is one part of an eight part book series, basically. Um, only two survive, uh, but we know what happens in the other ones because of people like, um, what do you call them? Aristotle and those people. So we know like what happens in those books because other people wrote about them. Um, so the Odyssey is the other part of the cycle. So it's the Iliad and the Odyssey, the ones that we have in their entirety, which is pretty cool. Uh, Cause they're the longest ones. What? <laughs> I guess I'll mention that Murat's in an internet cafe in Japan and can't speak. That do we not have the other books? We don't have the other books. We have the Iliad and the Odyssey. Oh, where did they go? <laughs> we lost them. Um, we just don't have them. Okay. Yeah. It's in Sad. They were written thousands of, you're welcome, thousands of years ago. Um, How many? Between two and three. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe even older. It's like an oral tradition. That's sick. Thanks. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> 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 All right. So we know quite a bit about them because of other people. Um, but that said, the Iliad is, well, have you, did, I, did you guys read the first book? No. 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 That's Nobody okay. read before class. Okay. No, it's all right. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Do you know what it is about without having read it? Um. No. <laughs> Greece. Okay. Greece. Yeah. It, it is. It is. You're right. Wait, it's Greece versus Turkey. Murat's gonna love it. You're right. It is Greece versus Turkey. But this is where, like Troy happens. Yes, this is where Troy happens. Good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can we win it yet? No, you, you don't. Spoilers. Oh. No. Oh. It's okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. So. The main events of the Trojan War that you might know beforehand include the Trojan horse and Achilles getting shot in the heel, the Achilles heel. So neither of those events happen in the Iliad. Um, the Iliad's about the Trojan War. It's about, about a few months of the 10th and final, maybe ninth, middle of the ninth to the 10th final years of the war. So it's about a few months in the last years of the war. We don't see the end of the war. We don't see the beginning of the war. We don't see Achilles getting shot in the heel. We don't see the Trojan horse. So what do we see? <laughs> Other stuff. In a, lot of, a lot of boats. Is this the one with all the boats? There's a lot of boats. Yeah, I think book two or three lists boats and we'll just kind of skim over that one. But yeah. What's, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about why that is. We'll skip the boats. We'll skip the boats, don't we? We can't skip the boats. Okay. <laughs> Rob wants the boats. I'm going to I think we need to. I think we need to. I need your consent on a few items to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Alec, what's up? Does Alexa want the boats? Dixie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm gonna tell you all the events that you kind of need to know for the context, because like I said, you know, the Iliad is in an eight book book series, basically. And we have like books three and six 
So we lose a lot of context. Um, so essentially, Zeus, who you probably all do know and hate, um, king of the gods, this all starts with him falling in love with a woman, because most stories start with that in Greek mythology. This time, he falls in love with Thetis, who is a Nairid, Nairid, which basically means sea nymph. Um, Thetis? Thetis, or Thetis. Thetis. Oh. T-H-E-T-I-S. Thetis. Yeah. Thetis. He doesn't fall in love with a fetus. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you I figure worse things have happened. I wouldn't put it past him, yeah. Yeah. So, he's in love with Thetis. Now, the problem is that Zeus was given a prophecy that one of his children was going to dethrone him like he dethroned his father, Kronos, king of the Titans. So, while he is in love with Thetis, he knows that he can't be with her, never mind the fact that he is, to, he is married uh, to his sister. So he gives Thetis to Peleus, or Peleus, king of Phythia, where the Myrmidons live. So Peleus and Thetis will eventually have a son Achilles. We'll get to him eventually, but he's not important at the moment. So at their wedding, Eris, the goddess of discord, wasn't invited. This is kind of like Maleficent. She got very angry, and so she threw a golden apple into the reception party, and on the apple it said, for the most beautiful. So Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite, who are three gods, goddesses, you probably know them, they argue over who gets the apple. But no one wants to settle it for them because nobody wants to anger the other two goddesses. So Zeus decides, all right, we'll get a third party, no big deal. And he swoops down to Troy and he picks up Paris, uh, who's just like a dude. And he's like, all right, Paris, like Trojan, um, you're in charge. <laughs> decide which of these three goddesses is the most beautiful and so he's like all right whatever so they come down and he can't decide or he's like afraid to decide so there's a few uh extra things the goddesses say so Hera says if you pick me I'll make you king of Europe and Asia Minor and he should have gone with that one but he didn't that um, was a good one yeah and then Athena says well if you pick me I'll make you very wise and skilled at battle which like okay but like you could be king of europe in asia minor but whatever and then aphrodite comes down and she's like i'm aphrodite like i'm obviously the hottest one but like beyond that like if you pick me i will give you the most beautiful woman on earth i'll make her fall in love with you and he's like that one <laughs> so he picks aphrodite um but he's like i'm gonna wait for like a decade or so to cash in on that offer, don't ask. And then he just kind of nopes for a little bit and is not in the story for a bit. Uh, so whatever. So by the way, this most beautiful woman on earth is Helen, who becomes Helen of Troy, uh, eventually. At the moment, she is just Helen, and um, she's you know marrying age about fourteen or whatever. And so her father <laughs> has been like, "Hey, who wants to marry my most beautiful woman on earth daughter?" And a hundred something people come by and they're like, me. Um, they're all princes and kings and stuff. And they're like, I want Helen. Um, they all come by. And similar to uh, earlier with the Apple discussion, nobody wants, the, the Helen's father doesn't want to pick one of them because he's going to make the other ones angry. And they're all very important kings and stuff. So he goes, all right, like, what am I going to do? And Odysseus, who's important for like the Odyssey and other, you know, stupid stuff he shows up and he's like yo I'm very smart like let's just like draw straws and whoever wins her wins her but the rest of us will sign a pact and we'll defend Helen's marriage no matter what so that means we won't attack her if we lose so beta oh what <laughs> so beta yeah so beta <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um so everyone's like, that That sounds great, Odysseus. So they draw straws, and this guy named Menelaus wins Helen. And Menelaus is the king of Sparta, who you probably have heard of. Yeah, Sparta. He's the king of Sparta. And Helen is now Helen of Sparta. So that's great. Uh, and now they have a gigantic army of Greek kings and princes who are going to defend Helen at all costs. You can probably see how the Trojan War came to be, but we'll get to that in a second. So. Um, she's chilling in Sparta. She has a daughter named Hermione. Uh, Hermione's about nine. And Paris is like, 
wow, like I won the most beautiful woman on earth, like 20 years ago, I'm going to cash in on that. <laughs> so he calls up Aphrodite and he's like, Hey, I want the most beautiful woman on earth. And she's like, no problem. So she swoops down to Sparta, picks up Helen, brings her to Troy. Um, how that happens. There are many different versions of that myth. Sometimes Aphrodite just brings her, sometimes Paris freaks her and abducts her, sometimes they fall in love and they run off willingly. Let's go with that one. Um, Detroit. Why, <laughs> Why did he take the deal? Why did he take what? Because he was falling in love naturally. Then why did he pick Aphrodite? Yeah, it seems like if he chose that one, but yet had to do all the work himself, yeah. it's like... I know. Well, you know, they contradict each other. It's diff this is this this is part of the book that we don't have because it's lost. So there's a lot of contradicting, like, yeah, deep lore. Deep lore. I know. <laughs> All right, we're almost to the war. So they run off together with Troy. Menelaus wakes up. Hermione's like, "Father, like, Mama's gone. Like, oh my God, I'm not a witch, so we can't do anything." So he's like, "All right, no problem. Guess what, Hermione? I've got a hundred boys willing to fight for your mom." And so he calls up all those kings who wanted to bang their mom. <laughs> and he's like, uh, uh, hey, let's, we're all like secretly in love with Helen. Let's go to Troy and get her back. And they're all like, yes. And then Calchas, who's a prophet, says, wait, I had a prophecy. My name's Calchas the prophet. And here's the deal. And he goes to Odysseus, who's really smart. And he's like, Odysseus, like, I had a prophecy. We can't win this war without Achilles. And Odysseus is like, who? <laughs> And um, Calchas says, all right, like Achilles, like, all right, he's the, he's the son of Peleus and Thetis, the two people whose marriage started this whole thing, right? He's like 15 or whatever. He's the best of the Greeks. Like, he just is. Like, he's the best. So we need him. And Odysseus is like, okay, where is he? And they're like, all right, so we don't know because Thetis is a goddess and she's so sad that her son is mortal. She's hidden him away so that he won't die because she hates that idea. We think that they hid them in King Lycomedes' castle. So Odysseus is like, great. So he goes to King Lycomedes and um, <laughs> checks it out. And so Achilles is there, but he's disguised as one of King Lycomedes' daughters uh, so that he won't get caught up in the war because his mom warned them, him about this. By the way, while he's here, uh, he hooks up with one of the daughters, Demea, and they have a son named Ferris, who comes in later. Don't don't worry about him. He's gone for the most part. But anyway, so Odysseus shows up. Achilles is dressed like a woman, and Odysseus is like, I gotta figure out which of these girls is secretly a man. So he um, like pretends he's a merchant, and he puts out a bunch of dresses and jewelry and like makeup and whatever, and then one spear. And then Achilles walks up and is like, whoa, cool spear. And he's like, I think that's <laughs> And that's how it's done. That's how he got him. <laughs> yeah. Got so, him. yeah. Locked. Because Achilles didn't have the forethought to be like, uh, I'm going to actually try at all. And yeah. Check the spear. So Odysseus convinces him and Achilles agrees. And Achilles is like, great, you know what? I'm the prince of this zone. So I'm going to bring 50 ships and each of those ships is going to carry 50 Myrmidon soldiers. It's going to be great. We're almost to Troy. So they boat up. They meet up. They're about to sail to Troy, but there's no wind. You know why? Because Menelaus, who is Helen's husband, Menelaus' brother, Agamemnon, he's very important. He made Artemis angry because he accidentally killed one of her deer. And the prophet Calchas is like, hey, you won't be able to sail unless, I have this prophecy, like, trust me, unless Agamemnon, you kill your daughter, if a Janiah. And Agamemnon says, why do I have to kill my daughter? And he's like, look, I'm a prophet, just like, trust me. And he's like, okay. So he calls his wife and tells his wife to bring his daughter down to the zone. And he, she's like, why? And he's like, because if a Janiah is going to marry Achilles, or whatever, okay? And then she's like, great, Achilles is the best one of all the Greeks. So they come down there, and then as she's walking down the aisle to the altar, turns out it's not a marriage altar, it's a sacrificial altar, and they kill her. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, they just That's kill her. And then the gods are like, great, cool, like you can sail now, there's wind, awesome, thank you. Um, 
So in some myths, Artemis saves her and like makes her a constellation or whatever. But what's important is that Agamemnon's wife, Clymenestra, is very angry and she has 10 years to plan her revenge plot, which does happen well after the Iliad. But just keep that in mind. I don't get why she's so mad though. Oh uh, yeah, you know, women. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The winds pick up the Achaean soldiers. Sorry, Achaean means Greek. The Achaean army sends off to Troy. They are almost there. They get there and the war begins. Finally, various gods take different sides. It's super great. Aphrodite takes the Trojan side. She likes Paris and Helen. She put them together. Hera and Athena take the other side because they don't like Aphrodite anymore. Who does? Um, no one does in this story, really. Uh, Zeus is kind of in the middle because whatever. Um, now the Greeks sack many a Trojan city on their way at one of them. Uh, well, at all of them, Achilles does most of the legwork, but at one especially uh, called Lernessus, Achilles picks up a princess, Briseis, as his war prize after killing her brothers and her mother and her father. Uh, now she's his war wife. Uh, he also picks up Chryseis, uh, who is the daughter of Chryses, who is a priest of Apollo. All right, so Chryseis is given to Agamemnon to be his war wife because he hasn't pissed off his wife enough. <laughs> now we're nine years into the war and that's where the Iliad begins. So all that oh. happens before the book that we're about to read. Um, yeah, <laughs> shall we begin? It's the rage of Achilles, right? Yes, the rage of Achilles. The rage of Achilles, I said. It's not about the Trojan horse. It's not about Achilles dying. It's not about anything that you might know about the Trojan War. What is it about? It's about the rage of Achilles, pretty much. It's basically about Achilles solving his anger management issues. Um, so we start with him at his very worst, and over time he gets better and better. Um, that's one of the many themes, but that's where we start. Okay, so I thought for this, I know we were used to doing plays where we pick a character, um, a lot of this is dialogue, so I thought I could be the narrator, and then when we get to Achilles and Agamemnon and whoever else, we can, someone else can pick it up. Okay. Is that Marat? Unless you want to whisper the whole thing. <laughs> or act, you can act out the whole thing, like, the whole time. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ready? Rage. That's great, Rach. <laughs> oh shit, he's got the heel. Achilles <laughs> heel? Oh no. I don't think you want that though. You seem really excited about it. I don't I don't know if we want an Achilles heel. <laughs> you want to be Achilles? Achilles? No? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go. All right. Rage, goddess, sing the rage of Peleus' son Achilles, murderous, doomed, that cost the Achaeans countless losses, hurling down to the house of death so many sturdy souls, great fighters' souls, but made their bodies carrion, beasts for the dogs and birds, and the will of Zeus was moving toward its end. Begin, muse, when the, first, when the two first broke and clashed, Agamemnon, lord of men, and brilliant Achilles. Yes, so Achilles and Agamemnon are going to clash. What god drove them to fight with such fury? Apollo, the son of Zeus and Leto. Incensed at the king, he swept a fatal plague through the army. Men were dying, and all because Agamemnon spurred Apollo's priest. Yes, Chryses approached the Achaeans' fast ships to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand, wound on a golden staff, the leap of the god, the dis distant deadly archer. So remember I said Agamemnon got a war wife, Chryseis? So her dad is a priest of Apollo. And so he came, he's coming back to um, the Greek army and he's asking for her back, it's like a gigantic ransom. He's like, take all my money, take a bunch of money. I just want my daughter back. He's had her for like nine years, all right? And uh, he's not gonna like that. He begged the whole Achaean army, but most of all, two supreme commanders, 
Atreus's two sons, Agamemnon, Menelaus, all Argives geared for war. May the gods who hold the halls of Olympus give you Priam's city to plunder. Sorry, then safe passage home. Just set my daughter free, my dear one. Here, accept these gifts, this ransom. Honor the God who strikes from worlds away, the son of Zeus, Apollo. Please honor Apollo, set my daughter free. In all ranks of Achaeans cried out their assent, respect the priest, accept the shining ransom. But it brought no joy to the heart of Agamemnon. This sparks no joy. The king dismissed the priest with a brutal order ringing in his ears. Never again, old man, let me catch sight of you by the hollow ships. Oh, wait, who wants to be Agamemnon? <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is, yeah. Right. I don't know what's happening. Me neither. You're at never again, old man. Okay, no, but so I'm, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Yeah. Never again, old man. Let me catch sight of you by the hollow ships. Not loitering now. Not slinking back tomorrow. The staff and the wreaths of God will never save you then. The girl, I won't give up the girl. Long before that, old age will overtake her in my house in Argos, far from her fatherland, slaving back and forth at the loom, forced to share my bed. Ew, what a creep. Yeah. Now go, mm. don't tempt my wrath, and you may depart alive. He's also got uh, wrath. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's got wrath and rage. Um, Agamemnon's the worst. Like, there's a lot of characters, and to help, just be like, Agamemnon is bad. <laughs> we don't like him. No, he's like on the good side. We don't like him. All right. The old man was terrified. He obeyed the order, turning, trailing away in silence down the shore, where the battle lines of breakers crash and drag. And moving off to a safe distance over and over, the old priest prayed to the son of sleek haired Leto, Lord Apollo. Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow, who strides the walls of Chrysi and Scylla sacrosanct, lord in the power of Tenedos, Smenetheus, god of the plague. If I ever roofed a shrine to please your heart, ever burned the long, rich bones of, of bulls and goats on your holy altar, now, now, bring my prayer to pass. Prayer to pass. <laughs> Pay the Danaeans back your arrows for my tears. Okay, so Apollo was god of many things like the sun, for instance, but he calls him God of the plague because he's like, hey, like, I want you to send a specific thing, not the sun, we don't need the sun, we need the plague. So he's asking Apollo to come through and send a plague onto the Danaeans, which means Achaeans, which means Greeks, lots of words. <laughs> so he sends that word, that word, word. <laughs> he's like, word, Apollo, please. Um, the prayer went up and Phoebus Apollo heard him. Down he strode from Olympus's peaks, storming at heart with his bows and hooded quiver slung across his shoulders. The arrows clanged at his back as the god quaked with rage. The god himself on the march and down he came like night. Over against the ships he dropped to a knee, let fly a shaft and a terrifying clash rang out from the great silver bow. First he went for the mules and circling dogs, but then launching a piercing shaft at the men themselves, he cut them down in droves, and the corpse fires burned on day and night, no end in sight. These arrows are metaphorical arrows of plague. So the plague hit the mules, and then it spread to the dogs, and then it started hitting the men themselves. So they have a plague now, and they're all practicing social distancing, um, <laughs> but not very well. <laughs> so nine days, the arrows of God swept through the army. On the 10th, Achilles called all the ranks to muster. The impulse seized him, sent by white-armed Hera. So Hera, the goddess, we'll get to her. Um, grieving to see the Achaean, fighting, Achaean fighters drop and die. Once they'd gathered, crowding the meeting grounds, the swift runner Achilles rose and spoke among them. Son of Atreus, Agamemnon. Now we are beat, sorry, oh my God, I did it again. Who wants to be Achilles? Son of Atreus, now we are beaten back. I fear the long campaign is lost, so home we sail. We can escape our death if war and plague are joining forces now to crush the Argives. 
But wait, let us question a holy man, a prophet, even a man skilled with dreams. Dreams as well can come our way from Zeus. Come. Someone to tell us why Apollo rages so, whether he blames us for a vow we failed or sacrificed. If only the god would share the smoky savor of lambs and full-grown goats, Apollo might be willing still, somehow, to save us from this plague. <laughs> Wait, is he like, maybe we'll give him a little euro, a little lamb, they'll feel better? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, come on, I know you're angry, but come on, come on, come on, have a... Have Here, a have, have a go. Have a go. You'll feel better. You'll, 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 you'll whip the plague. I feel like that's just really comments on how fickle. Like, one, he just like, someone was just like, can you like kill all these people? And Apollo's like, yeah. Yeah. Sure, here we go. <laughs> and then it's just like, like, is he going to be satisfied by a euro? Or like a, like a kebab? Like, I don't know. The gods are kind of like, teenagers um imagine they're just like very emotional and horny and um <laughs> and they would be satisfied by a kebab yeah i mean <laughs> who doesn't who anyway, <sighs> so they come to a prophet they're actually going to go to calchas who is the same guy who told agamemnon 10 years ago to kill his daughter to pass the river um so he's still here still kicking uh, still just chilling with these guys at war. And so they're like, Calchas, yo, like, come over here, please. Um, what do we need to do? Like, do we need to kill another daughter? Like, what can help, please? So he proposed. And down he sat again as Calchas rose among them, Fester's son, the clearest by far of all the seers who scanned the flight of birds. Um, they used to read birds, like how birds fly to tell the future. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, neat. It's also mentioned in um, Oedipus Rex. They mentioned that a couple times. He knew all things that are, all things that are past and all that are to come. The seer who had led the Argive ships to Troy. Argive also means Greek. Argive, Achaean, and Danaean all mean Greek. Are they different, like, subcultures of Greece? Are they... I thought so, but like, like the back of the book has a um, glossary and it just says like another name for Greek. <laughs> I like, Wait. don't know. I mean, they must, there must be some difference, but basically it's like this, the good side, the good guys, the Greeks. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, he led the Argive ships to Troy. So he led the ships to Troy by killing Iphigenia. With the second sight the god Apollo gave him, for the army's good, the seer began to speak. Rob, do you want to be Calchas? No, can you guys hear me? I, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me because you guys keep freezing for me, so I'm not sure if I'm coming. It's, it's, a, it's very distorted. Sounds like 90s music. <laughs> <laughs> I, I texted you. That you sound distorted and broken. <laughs> so that's quite a thing to say to someone. <laughs> Rip. Rip. You sound distorted. I like the anger. Rage. Of Achilles. He hasn't even like done anything yet. He's not even on screen yet. <laughs> so, what's he so mad about? You know, well, we're about to find out. We're just waiting. Like, Zoom to stop having its rage. And yes, the rage of Zoom. The rage. <laughs> okay. Um, Rob says he's having trouble with internet. We keep freezing. That's all right. So I'll read it. For now, maybe it'll clear up. So yes, so Calchas is trying to be like, here's what we can do to stop Apollo from killing us all. Uh, so Achilles is, oh, hi Rob. <laughs> so Achilles goes, Calchas, what can we do? And he goes, Achilles, dear to Zeus, you order me to explain Apollo's anger, the distant deadly archer. I'll tell it all, but strike a pact with me. Swear you will defend me with all your heart, with words and strength of hand. For there is a man I will enrage. 
I see it now, a powerful man who lords it over all the archives. One the Achaeans must obey, a mighty king raging against an inferior is too strong. Even if he can swallow down his wrath today, still he will nurse the burning in his chest until sooner or later he sends it bursting forth. Consider it closely, Achilles, will you save me? He's talking about Agamemnon and Achilles, basically. Uh, they're kind of foils of each other, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, okay, who was Achilles? Colin? Coming up. And the matchless runner. You're a matchless runner, baby. You assured him. Courage. Out with it now, Calchas. Reveal the will of God. Whatever you may know. And I swear by Apollo, dear to Zeus, the power to pray to, the power you pray to, Calchas. When you reveal God's will to the Argives, no one, not while I'm alive and see the light on earth, no one will lay his heavy hands on you by the hollow ships, none among all the armies, not even if you mean Agamemnon, here who now claims to be by far the best of the Achaeans. So Achilles is super bitter because like his title is best of the Greeks, best of the Achaeans. And he's like, I won't, I will protect you from anyone. Uh, don't worry, Calchas. Like, even if you happen to be like subtweeting Agamemnon, who thinks he's the best of the Greeks, even though I'm the best of the Greeks. <laughs> he's just like super mad um, already. And like nothing's happened yet. Um, so Calchas is like, cool, thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> and the seer took heart. And this time spoke out bravely. Beware. Apollo casts no blame for a vow we failed, a sacrifice. The gods enraged because Agamemnon spurred his priest. He refused to free his daughter, Chryseis. He refused the ransom. That's why the archer sends us pains, and he will send us more, and he will never drive this shameful destruction from the Argives, not until we give back the girl with the sparkling eyes to her loving father no price, no ransom paid, and carry a sacred hundred bulls to Christy Town. Then we can calm the god and only then appease him. So Agamemnon messed up because he could have given back the girl and gotten a tower of gold and stuff. But instead now he has to give her back and give a hundred bulls, which is like a lot of money and like get nothing in return. And he's like, no, <laughs> like I'm not giving up my war bride. Like, no, I love her or whatever. All right. Like, I love her. So Calchas declared and sat down, but among them rose Alec, the fighting son of Atreus, lord of the far-flung kingdoms, Agamemnon, furious, his dark heart filled to the brim, blazing with anger now, his eyes searing, his eyes like searing fire. With a sudden killing look, he wheeled on Calchas first. Fear of misery, never a word that works to my advantage. Always misery warms your heart, your prophecies. Never a word of prophet said or brought to pass. Now, again, you divine God's will for the armies. <laughs> Brute. <laughs> Brute? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Brute? Like, 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 think about it, like, brooded about as fast. Why the deadly archer multiplies our pains because I, I refuse that glittering price for the young girl, Crises. Indeed, I prefer her by far, the girl herself. I want her mine in my own house. I rank her higher than Clytemestra. Clytemestra? Yeah. Yeah. My wedded wife. Oh, I should know my wife's name. Her. <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> I rank her higher than Clemenestra, my wedded wife. She's nothing less than build or breeding in mind or works of hand, but I'm willing to give her back even so. <laughs> uh, if that is best for all, what I really want is to keep my people safe, not seeing them dying, but fetch me another prize and straight off too. Else I alone of the Argives go without my honor. That would be a disgrace. You're all my witness. Look, my prize is snatched away. Oh my so god, like, what a bitch. So he's basically like, 
you take my girlfriend. Fuck, I'm gonna go water anyway. <laughs> he's like, but I want my girlfriend. She's better than even my wife. And then he's like, but I don't even want her. You can have her, whatever. But I want a girlfriend. So I'm gonna take one of yours. So give me one of your girlfriends. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so he's like, I need a prize because, like, I'm the best. Like, I can't not have a prize. Like, um, and, okay, this is a good time to mention that obviously women aren't property, but at this point, oh, they aren't. women okay. were property. And not only were they property, they were, like, the best property. So taking someone's girlfriend away is, like, taking their best item. The Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Or, oh, my God. They don't really care about the women very much, especially not like these slaves. I mean, they might, but like what really hurts him is not, his heart isn't breaking. He's like, you are hurting my honor. Like Mm. you're offending me by stealing away my gold. So Um. think of it like that a little bit. He's not really like heartbroken. He's just like, no, like you're taking my reason. My toy. Yeah. So, but Achilles is not going to stand for that. The swift runner, Achilles, answered him at once. Just how Agamemnon, great field marshal, most grasping man alive, how can the generous Argives give you prizes now? I know of no troves of treasure piled lying idle anywhere. Whatever we dragged from towns we plundered, all's been portioned out. But collect it. Call it back from rank and file? That would be a disgrace. So, return the girl to the god, at least for now. We Achaeans will pay you back three, four times over. If Zeus will grant us the gift somehow, someday, to raise Troy's massive ramparts to the ground. Yeah. So he's talking about Troy's walls. He has great walls, biggest walls, fantastic walls, beautiful walls, impenetrable walls around Troy. Um, and they can't break through these walls. So uh, he's like, look, like, can you do without a girlfriend for like a couple weeks? And then like, eventually we'll get another one, like relax, but like chill. And then like, once we sack Troy, you're going to have a bunch of gold and women and prizes. So just like relax, like this means nothing. It's just like your toy for the moment. Whatever. So, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so Agamemnon is not going to have that because he doesn't really like Achilles to begin with. And like, it's my toy. Like, it's my lady. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to take my girlfriend. I like her more than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so King Agamemnon countered. Not so quickly. But brave as you are, God like Achilles, trying to cheat me. Oh, no, you won't get past me. Take me in that way. What do you want? To cling to your own prize while I sit calmly by, empty-handed? Is that why you ordered me to give her back? No. If our generous archives will give me a prize, a match for my desires equal to what I've lost, well and good. But if they give me nothing, I will take a prize myself, your own, or Ajax's, or Odysseus's prize. I'll commandeer her myself. And I'll let that man and I go visit choke with rage. Oh, gross. I'll Ooh. commandeer her myself and let that man I go to visit choke with rage. Enough. We'll deal with all this later in due time. <laughs> He's got a lot of problems. Now come. Sure. <laughs> we haul a black ship down to the bright sea, gather a decent number of oarsmen along her locks, and put abroad a sacrifice to Chryses herself in all her beauty. We embark her too. <laughs> Let one of the leading. Oh, so he's saying he's gonna like, like she'll be gone. Wait, we embark her too. Yeah. So he's like, all right, look, I'm gonna get a retribution for this. Like, I'm gonna take somebody else's prize, woman, slave wife. I'm going to take maybe Ajax's, maybe Odysseus's, definitely Achilles. But we'll talk about that later. No big deal. All right. Like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so Chryseis whatever the hundred bulls, whatever uh, Calca said that we needed, we're going to put on a boat and push it off to Chryseis' hometown. Mm. And just get rid of it, and hopefully that will appease Apollo. 
Apollo, Apollo, and then I'll get a different bride later. And like Achilles, just get ready to get rid of your bride. Um, and then he kind of <laughs> steps off and um, they're gonna have to deal with that. And Achilles is not gonna let that go, but you didn't finish yet, did you? No. No, go so on. Let, let one of the leading captains take command. Ajax, Idomeneus, trusty Odysseus, or you, Achilles, you, the most violent man alive, so you can perform the rites for us and calm the god yourself. A dark glance, and the headstrong runner answered him in kind. Shameless, armored in shamelessness, always shrewd with greed. How could any archive soldier obey your orders? Freely and gladly do your sailing for you, or fight your armies full force. Not I. No, it wasn't Trojan spearmen who brought me here to fight. The Trojans never did me damage, not in the least. They never stole my cattle or my horses. Never in Thea, where the rich soil breeds strong men, did they lay waste my crops. How could they? Look at the endless miles that lie between us. Shadowy mountain ranges, seas that surge and thunder. No. You colossal, shameless. We all followed you to please you, to fight for you, to win your honor back from the Trojans. Menelaus and you, you dog face. Yikes. What do you care? Nothing. You don't look right or left. You na and now you threaten to strip me of my prize in person? The one I fought for long and hard, and sons of Achaia handed her to me. My honors never equal yours. Whenever we sack some wealthy Trojan stronghold, my arms bear the brunt of the raw, savage fighting. True, but when it comes to dividing up the plunder, the lion's share is yours, and back I go to my ships, clutching my scraps, some pittance that I love when I have fought to exhaustion. No more now. Back I go to Thea. Better that we that better that way by far. To journey home in the beaked ships of war, I have no mind to linger here disgraced, brimming your cup and piling up your plunder. Christina, I have a question about so are these do these figures represent their city states? Like, is there political commentary for the time? Um. All right. So this. All right. <laughs> so the Iliad takes place during the Bronze Age, and it was told during the Iron Age, like okay. hundreds of years later. So yeah. it's not modern. Um. But all of these people came from real places. Um, yeah. So they are really considered to be real people. Um. But like in the way that. I don't know, Noah like, was like a real historical Jesus. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So um, they're not modern politics, but they are all kings or princes of their own little kingdoms. Because um, like Greece didn't exist. It was just like a bunch of little like United Kingdoms. Like the United Kingdom. Yeah, like the cities, the city cities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, there, there is politics there. Like Achilles is like, look, like I don't have to be involved. Um, I could just leave with my bunches of armies and like you can just fight on your own and also i'm the best of the greeks so, like you need me um yeah yeah which is pretty much all that he's saying in this big long monologue he's like look i don't have to be here i'm here for you especially i don't have to be here because i wasn't in that pact with helen i was too young to be one of her suitors like i came here because odysseus convinced me to come so i could just leave um you really shouldn't be taking my bride dude um, and he's like, look, like I do all the fighting and you got all the prizes. Like, eh. um, I'm leaving. And he's just like, dead ass, like I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye. Like nine years into the war. But Agamemnon's not having that. <laughs> but the Lord of Men, Agamemnon, shot back. Dessert, by all means, the spirit drives you home. I will never beg you to stay, not on my account. Never. Others will take my side and do me honor. Zeus above all, whose wisdom rules the world. You, I hate you, most of all the warlords loved by the gods. Always dear to your heart, strife, yes, battles, 
the bloody grind of war. Did I miss something? He's just yelling at Achilles more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what if you are a great soldier? That's such a gift of God. Go home with your ships and comrades. Lord it over your Mimridans. Mirror middens. Myrmidons. Myrmidons, thank you. You are nothing to me. You and your overweening anger, but let this be my warning on your way. Since Apollo insists on taking my crises, I'll send her back in my own ships with my crew. But I, I will be there in person at your tents to take Bryces in all her beauty. That's Achilles' like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your own prize. So you can learn just how much greater I am than you. And the next man up may shrink from matching words with me from hoping to rival Agamemnon's strength for strength. He's like, fine, leave. I'll take her anyway. Yeah, he's, this Dude, is like, power trip. This is like worse than Team Jacob, Team Edward. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but without a female character. Yeah. But with two who barely have personalities. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he broke off in anguish, gripped Achilles. Not my wife. <laughs> the heart in his rugged chest was pounding, torn. Should he draw the long, sharp sword slung at his hip and thrust through the ranks and kill Agamemnon now? Or check his rage and beat his fury down? As his racing spirit veered back and forth, just as he drew the huge blade from its sheath down from the vaulting's heavens, swept Athena. All right, so he's about to kill Agamemnon out of rage, and Athena comes down. Athena likes both of them. She likes every Greek hero. She is the god of wisdom and war, and she loves smart war people. She especially loves Odysseus, but because she really likes Achilles and Agamemnon, she definitely doesn't want either of them to die. So she swoops down. The white-armed goddess Hera had sent her down. Hera also likes them both. Hera loved both men. All right, well, here we are. Hera loved both men and cared for both alike. Rearing behind him, Pallas seized his fiery hair. Only Achilles saw her, none of the other fighters. Struck with wonder, he spun around. He knew her at once. Pallas Athena, the terrible blazing of those eyes, and his winged words went flying. Achilles? Why? Why now? Child of Zeus with the shield of thunder, why come now to witness the outrage Agamemnon just committed? I tell you this, and so help me, it's the truth. He'll soon pay for his arrogance with his life. Her gray eyes clear. The goddess Athena answered, Down from the skies I come to check your rage. If only you will yield. The white-armed goddess Hera sped me down. She loves you both. She cares for you both alike. This is a good point to mention that this was like a song type thing. Like someone performed this out loud. So there's a lot of sound. Down from the sky, the count of tricky range. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the lines are repeated because it's like a memory tactic, but also like poetry. Stuff repeats. Yeah. <laughs> Lyrics. I love it. I came down from the skies. <laughs> <laughs> I love you both. Uh, she cares for you both alike. Stop this fighting now. Don't lay hand to sword. Lash him with threats of the price that he will face. Use your words, not your actions. And I tell you this, and I know it is the truth. One day, glittering gifts will lie before you three times over to pay for all of his outrage. Hold back now. Obey us both. So she urged, and the swift runner complied at once. I must. When the two of you hand down commands, goddess, a man submits, though his heart breaks with fury. Better for him by far. If a man obeys the gods, they're quick to hear his prayers. We will obey the gods. Um, the hierarchy in ancient Greece, by the way, like, goddesses, they're women, so, like, they barely count. But because they're goddesses, they actually count more than all humans. So, like, they're still lesser than male gods. But they're like still higher than all humans so tricky but um so he's like yes and with that achilles stayed his burly hand on the silver hilt and slid the huge blade back in its sheath he would not fight the orders of athena 
Soaring home to Olympus, she rejoined the gods aloft in the halls of Zeus, whose shield is thunder. But Achilles rounded on Agamemnon once again, lashing out at him, not relaxing his anger for a moment. Staggering drunk with your dog's eyes, your fawn's heart. Never once did you arm with the troops and go to battle or risk an ambush packed with Achaea's picked men. You lack the courage and you can see death coming. Safer by far you find to foray all through camp. Commit commandeering the prize of any man who speaks against you. King who devours his people, worthless husks, the men you rule, if not Atreides, this outrage would have been your last. I tell you this, and I swear a mighty oath upon it. By this, this scepter, look, that never again will put forth crown and branches. Now it's left its stump on the mountain ridge forever, nor will it sprout new green again. Now the brazen axe has stripped its bark and leaves, and now the sons of Achaea pass it back and forth as they hand their judgment down, upholding the honored customs whenever Zeus commands. This scepter will be the mighty force behind my oath. Some day, I swear, a yearning for Achilles will strike Achaea's son in all your armies. But then, Atreides, harrowed as you will be, nothing you can do can save you. Now, when your hordes of fighters drop and die, cut down by the hands of man-killing Hector, then, then you will tear your heart out, desperate, raging that you disgraced the best of the Achaeans. Best of the Achaeans. Best. Yeah, so rich. This is like some Naruto Sasuke shit. <laughs> It's very dramatic, yeah. <laughs> um, so the bit with the scepter, they this whole time, by the way, they they have a speaking stick, like you know, like when you. <laughs> oh, it's a, they have a talking stick, like no, like <laughs> yeah. like like which like I'm HR, I'm the HR rep, and I'm trying to solve a problem. Here's a talking stick. Yes, yeah, it's like literally they have a talking stick, and they pass it back and forth, and he's like. By this scepter, this talking stick, I make this oath that I, you know, will, someday you'll need me and uh, you'll be sad that you disgraced me. <laughs> this talking stick doesn't really matter. It would have mattered a lot more to the Greeks that were reading this. Uh, but to us, basically, he's like, you'll pay for this. Is it like he's cursing a custom? It's more like he's like, you know, like we swear on Bibles, something like yeah. that. Trust me on this, our sacred talking stick. <laughs> you will regret this, sort of thing. Mm. Just like how angry they are. And they're just like very angry and waiting patiently for the sun. Yeah. <laughs> it's their turn to speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so now he's even angry at the stick. Down on the ground, he dashed the scepter studded bright with golden nails <laughs> and took his seat again. <laughs> The son of Atreus smoldered, glaring across at him. But Nectar rose between them, the man of winning words, the clear speaker of Pylos, sweeter than honey from his tongue, the voice flowed on and on. Two generations of mortal men he had seen go down by now, those who were born and bred with him in the old days in Pylos's holy realm, and now he ruled a third. He pleaded with both kings with good clear will. Marat, can you talk now? Do you want to part? <laughs> you don't have to. Want me to read it and then you'll act it? No more. Or enormous sorrow comes to all Achaea. How they would exult, Priam and Priam's sons and all the Trojans. Oh, they'd leap for joy to hear the two of you battling on this way. 
you who excel us all, first in Achaean councils, first in the ways of war. Stop, please, listen to Nestor. You are both younger than I, and in my time, I struck up with better men than you, even you. I think he's talking about Achilles. But never but once did they make light of me. I've never seen such men. I never will again. Men like Perithos, Dryas, that fine captain, Canius, and Exadius, and Polyphemus, royal prince, and Theseus, Agus's boy, a match for the immortals. He's like doing the old man thing where he's just like <laughs> going off the rails a little bit, but he'll come back. Okay. They were the strongest mortals ever bred on earth. The strongest, and they fought against the strongest too. Shaggy centaurs, wild brutes of the mountains. They hacked them down. Terrible, deadly work. And I was in their ranks, fresh out of Pylos, far away from home. They enlisted me themselves, and I fought on my own, a freelance, single-handed. And none of the men who walk the earth these days could battle with those fighters. None, but they, they took to heart my counsels. They marked my words. So now you listen to, here's where he comes back to reality. Yielding is far better. Don't seize the girl. He means Briseis, Achilles' wife. Don't seize the girl, Agamemnon. Powerful as you are, leave her. Just as the sons of Achaea gave her. His prize from the very first. And you, Achilles, never hope to fight it out with your king. Pitting force against his force, no one can match the honors dealt a king, you know, a sceptered king, to whom great Zeus gives glory. So he's like, guys, you need to stop. Don't take Achilles' girl. Don't threaten the Memnon. We're just going to both get hurt. Please don't. Just stop. Go home. <clears throat> Strong as you are, a goddess was your mother, Achilles. Uh, his mom was a goddess. He has more power because he rolls over more men. Atrid, end your anger. Look, it's Nestor. I beg you, cool your fury against Achilles. Here the man stands over all Achaea's armies, our rugged bulwark braced for shocks of war. But King Agamemnon answered him in haste. True, old man, all you say is fit and proper, but the soldier wants to tower over the armies. He wants to rule over all, to lord over all, give out orders to every man in sight. Well, there's one, I trust, who will never yield to him. What if the everlasting gods have made a spearman of him? Have they entitled him to hurl abuse at me? Yes! Placing Achilles broken quickly. What a worthless, burnt-out coward I'd be called if I would submit to you and all your orders, whatever you blurt out. Fling them at others. Don't give me commands. Never again, I trust, will Achilles yield to you. And I tell you this, take it to heart, I warn you. My hands will never, never do battle for that girl, neither with you, king, nor any man alive. You Achaeans gave her, now you've snatched her back. But all the rest I possess beside me, my fast black ship, not one bit of it can you seize against my will, Atreides. Come, try it, so the men can see that instant your black blood gush and spurt about my spear. Yeah, so Agamemnon goes, all right, you can take my girl. But if you take anything else, I'm going to kill you. So they kind of leave it in this very <laughs> space. Um, and he means it, you know. So, all right. Once the two had fought it out with words, battling face to face, both sprang to their feet and broke off the muster beside the Argive squadrons. Achilles strode off to his trim ships and shelters, back to his friends Patroclus his boyfriend, by the way, and their comrades. Agamemnon had a vessel hauled down to sea. He picked out 20 oarsmen to man her locks, put aboard, abroad the, put aboard the cattle to sacrifice for the gods, and led Chryseis in all her beauty amidships. So Achilles goes to his tent to pout, 
and Agamemnon puts the girl that he's going to return uh, on a boat with everything else that he needs, and they send her off. She's going to be returned. Versatile Odysseus took the helm as captain, whatever, he's there too. All embarked, the party launched out to sea on the sea's foaming lanes, while the son of Atreus took his troops to wash to purify themselves with the filth of plague. All right, so we're actually, no, never mind. Uh, they scouted off through scourings on the surf and sacrificed to Apollo full-grown bulls and goats along the beaten shore of the fallow barren sea, and savory smoke went swirling up to the skies. So the men were engaged throughout the camp. King Agamemnon would not stop the quarrel, the first threat he hurled against Achilles. He called Talthabias and Eurybates briskly, his two heralds ready, willing aids. Agamemnon said this. Go to Achilles' lodge. Take Briseis at once, his beauty. Briseis? 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 Is he Briseis? Briseis? Oh my god. Yeah. Go to Achilles' lodge. Take Briseis at once, his beauty. Briseis, by the hand and bring her here. But if you will not surrender her, I'll go myself. I'll seize her myself with an army at my back and all the worse for him. <laughs> so they're like, they're like two army camps together and they're already fighting. Yeah, no, they're on the same side. And there's like a bunch of different armies, like all the, you know, city states are together. They all have a different army. And um, so I'm not like, hey, go down the beach to Achilles' zone. Please take his wife, bring her back here. And they're like, uh, okay. And then they kind of go. He sent them off with the strict order ringing in their ears. Against their will, the two men made their way along the breaking surf of the barren salt sea and reached the Myrmidon shelters and their ships. They found him beside his lodge in Black Hull, seated grimly, and Achilles took no joy when he saw the two approaching. They were afraid. They held the king in awe and stood there silent. Not a word to Achilles, not a question, but he sensed it all in his heart, their fear, their charge, and broke the silence for them. Welcome, couriers, good heralds of Zeus and men. Here, come closer. You have done nothing to me. You're not to blame. No one but Agamemnon. He's the one who sent you for Briseis. Go, Patroclus, prince. Bring out the girl and hand her to them so they can take her back. But let them both bear witness to my loss in the face of blissful gods and mortal men. In the face of that unbending, ruthless king, if the day should come when the armies need me to save their ranks from ignominious, stark defeat, the man is raving with all the murderous fury in his heart. He lacks the sense to see a day behind, a day ahead, a safeguard the Achaeans battling by the ships kind of projecting a little bit. <laughs> Achilles is also very emotional and impulsive, but whatever. Uh -uh. Patroclus obeyed his great friend. Right? The man. He led Briseis in all her beauty from the lodge and handed her over to the men to take away. And the two walked back along the Argive ships, but while she trailed on behind, reluctant every step. But Achilles wept and slipping away from his companions, far apart, sat down on the beach of the heaving gray sea and scanned the endless ocean. Reaching out his arms again and again, he prayed to his dear mother. Mother, you gave me life, sure as that life will be. So at least Olympian Zeus, thundering up on high, should give me honor. But now he gives me nothing. Atreus, son of Agamemnon, where all his far-flung kingdoms, the man disgraces me, seizes and keeps my prize. He tears away, he tears her away himself. He just goes and whines to mommy. <laughs> Mom. The best of the Greeks. All right. So he wept and prayed and his noble mother heard him, seated near her father, the old man of the sea, in the salt green depths. Suddenly up she rose from the churning surf like mist and settling down beside him, 
as he wept, stroked Achilles gently, whispering his name. My child, why in tears? What sorrow has touched your heart? Tell me, please, don't harbor it deep inside you. We must share it all. And now from his depths, the proud runner groaned. You know, you know why labor through it all. You know it all so well. We raided Thebe once, Adion's sacred capital. We ravaged the place, hauled all the plunder here, and the armies passed it around, share and share alike. And they chose the beauty Chryseis for Agamemnon. You don't have to read this whole page. Um, it's okay. more or less repetition of what we already know. Um, he's just telling his mom. So this whole, we can skip it <laughs> down to the- like, Mom, here's the story so far. Like, mom, here's what happened. But you, mother, if you have any power at all, protect your son. Go to Olympus, plead with Zeus if you ever warmed his heart with a word or any action. Time and again, I heard your claims in father's halls, boasting how you and you alone of all the immortals rescued Zeus the lord of the dark storm cloud from ignominious stark defeat. That day the Olympians tried to chain him down. Hera, Poseidon, lord of the sea, and Pallas Athena, you rushed to Zeus, dear goddess, broke those chains, quickly ordered and ordered the hundred-hander to steep Olympus, that monster whom the immortals called Briareus. But every mortal calls the sea god son Aegeon, though he's stronger than his father. Down he sat, flanking Cronus's son, gargantuan in the glory of it all. And the blessed gods were struck with terror then. They stopped shackling Zeus. Remind him of that. Now, go and sit beside him, grasp his knees, persuade him somehow to help the Trojan cause, to pin the Achaeans back against their ships, trap them round the bay, and mow them down so all can reap the benefits of their king. So even mighty Atreides can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the Achaeans. Yeah, so he's like, please go tell Zeus, I don't even care, I'd rather lose the war. I don't even care. Have Zeus make the Trojans win, because I'm that mad. <laughs> so, Thetis answers, bursting into tears. Oh, my son, my sorrow, why did I ever bear you? All I bore was doom. Oof. Would to God you could linger by your ships without a grief in the world, without a torment, doomed to a short life. You have so little time, and not only short now, but filled with heartbreak, too. More than all other men alive. Doomed twice over. Ah, to a cruel fate I bore you in our halls. Still, I shall go to Olympus, crowned with snow, and repeat your prayer to Zeus, who loves the lightning. Perhaps he will be persuaded. But you, my child, stay here by the fast ships. Rage on at the Achaeans. Just keep clear of every foray in the fighting. Only yesterday, Zeus went off to the Ocean River to feast with Ethiopians, loyal, lordly men, and all the gods went with him. But in 12 days, the father returns to Olympus. Then for your sake, up I go to the bronze floor, the royal house of Zeus. I'll grasp his knees. I'll, I think I'll win him over. All right, so we can skip a little bit of this as well. But suffice it to say, Thetis says, great. So I will, Zeus at the moment is in Ethiopia. But when he comes back, I will go up to Olympus and ask him to, um, to help the Trojans win. I'll do my best. So the next couple pages dictate how Chryseis comes home. Um, and how they do everything to sacrifice the bulls and whatever, it's in a lot of detail. So I'm gonna skip a little bit and tell you the important stuff. Odysseus leads Chryseis up to the altar, placing her in her loving father's arms, and then he leaves. And the priest embraces the child he loved exultant. Chryseis stretched his arms to the sky and prayed in a high resounding voice, hear me Apollo, God of the silver bow who strides the walls of Chrysi and Scylla sacrosanct, Lord and power of Tenedos, if you honored me last time and heard my prayer, 
and rain destruction down on all Achaia's ranks. Now bring my prayer to pass once more. Now at last, drive this killing plague from the armies of Achaia. So remember that was like the main problem of this chapter a billion pages ago. Now the plague will go away. Yay, <laughs> all is done. But mm. Achilles and Agamemnon are still fighting because now they're pissed about something else. Mm -mm. But Apollo's happy now, so that's what's important. So in this book, it's on page 94. We're gonna skip to a paragraph that starts with, but he raged on, grimly camped by his fast fleet. The royal son of Peleus, the swift runner Achilles. Now he no longer haunted the meeting grounds where men win glory. Now he no longer went to war. But day after day, he ground his heart out, waiting there, yearning, always yearning for battle cries and combat. He's not fighting anymore. He's just pouting in his tent, waiting for mommy to come back with the good news. So Thetis goes up to Olympus because he's back from Ethiopia. Now as the 12th dawn, after this shown clear, the gods who live forever marched home to Olympus. And I'll also skip over a bit of this because again, it's repeated. Uh, basically she repeats what, what Achilles wanted her to say. And Zeus is filled with the one emotion that everybody has, anger. Filled with anger, Zeus who marshals the storm clouds answered her at last. Disaster. You will drive me into war with Hera. She will provoke me, she with her shrill abuse. Even now in the face of all the immortal gods, she harries me perpetually. Hera charges me that I always go to battle for the Trojans. Away with you now, Hera might catch us here. I will see to this, I will bring it all to pass. Look, I will bow my head if that satisfies you. That, I remind you, that among the immortal gods is the strongest, truest sign that I can give. No word or work of mine, nothing can be revoked. There is no treachery, nothing left unfinished once I bow my head to say it shall be done. Whatever. So he's like, yeah, sure, I will absolutely do that. I will help the Trojans win. Uh, yep, even though it's going to make my wife angry. And his wife's angry. Hera knew it all. She knew it all along. Um, more or less, for the rest of it, they fight. My only note is mommy God and daddy God are fighting again. <laughs> <laughs> we can really truly skip the rest of the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Mostly they get in a little tiffed and um, at the end they forgive each other and go to sleep. Aww. Yeah. They... A lot of anger. Yeah. If you are into the gods, you can read it, but mostly it's just like, suffice it to say, all the gods are angry at each other, just like all the humans. And that chapter pretty much just sets it up, but uh, it's a lot of description for just pretty much that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. We made it. Woo! Nice. I can't wait to read A Great Gathering of Armies in book two. Okay. The second part of book two, it is book two just lists a bunch of ships and people. So that's going to be real fun. Yeah. And I can't wait to talk about boats. Yeah. It's yeah, like, see, Marat's excited. In this Marat, you better have voice chat so that we can just, like, just boats. Boats, 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 boats. Uh-huh. Yeah, you that's can... That's all I have to say about that. Yay! And book one.